I play the young boy's father. I am the great bullfighter. I follow a great tradition, a great, uh, a great legacy of bullfighters, a family of bullfighters. And of course, I expect my son to carry on the tradition. It's his, not only his legacy, it's his destiny. There's no question about that. It's in your DNA, it's in your blood. Um, it's an old, old story. That's why this is a universal story, because it is an old story. Father and son. <clears throat> Turgenev, for heaven's sake, you know, with all the drama involved, and uh, that's that's the trajectory of the story. Um, this, 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 there is no no doubt in the father's mind that his son will carry on the tradition. That is the that's the bump in the road soon to come, because we do reinvent ourselves and we invent ourselves as we walk. We create our own path as we walk. That's what this the boy is going to find out, and that's what the father is going to find out. So they're both on a path. What drew me to the project initially was uh, Mr. Del Toro. When I heard his name, I said, I'm interested, send me the script, without a doubt. We had dinner many years ago at my house, and I was, um, I was very, very impressed by his imagination and the depth of his curiosity. So there's anyone with that, and of course he's proven to be that, and uh, I, I, was, I was very happy to be part of it. Jorge Gutierrez is the most enthusiastic person if you're feeling bad, you're not going to feel bad after a session with Jorge. He just fills you with confidence. And that's, that's, um, that's the kind of thing that you can't learn. It's got to be part of your, your makeup, you know. And he's, he's got, I think for Jorge, at least in the, in the work situation, he's a cup half full kind of guy. And I'm comfortable with that. He can also take a good joke because I'm very mischievous that way. I don't like to take myself seriously. No, I'm, I'm, I think if anything bores me is someone who takes himself seriously. What struck me about, about the animation was, of course, how human it seemed, you know, the essence of, of, of a person out of wood. I mean, here are these, these, these puppets, essentially, right? And it was, uh, it, it was very affecting. And, of course, the, the colors and the shapes, uh, I, I was struck by it. It, made me, it makes me smile. I love the bad guys here. But writing your own story is essential because everybody's going to have to respect you if you do that. You're going to be true to yourself. You're going to be, seems to me, someone that you can depend on. <laughs> uh, it's a terrific cast, a cast of thousands. I was surprised there were so many people that I know and know about. Mr. Luna and, of course, uh, Cheech and all those people. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I, I, heard, I was watching some and hearing, laughing and, and enjoying the wonderful thing about animation, if it's done right, if the story is good, <clears throat> and it comes from here, from the heart, right? uh, it touches you. And you can go into areas that you wouldn't you know, necessarily go to that people don't think about. You know? um, the, the, if, if, it makes you, if, it, if it makes the audience participate, which is what good art does, as opposed to entertainment. Good art, as uh, one, one, one gentleman told me, makes you be a participant in it. It doesn't do it for you, like good literature. It's filled with stereotypes, almost tells you how to think and how to feel. But if you have a good artistic experience, either in music, in, in, in the cinema, design, dance, look, I say, you know, you're not the same person walking out as you did walking in. It changes you. You may not know it right away. You know, if you see a really cool painting and you understand where it was from, what it was about, really important piece of music, really important piece of literature, you will not be the same person. And that's what the wonderful thing about animation has that opportunity to do that. You can go into areas that ordinarily people wouldn't entertain talking about or thinking about. What's missing today is a sense of, uh, <clears throat> a sense of shame, you know. What is it going to do to my family? <clears throat> what does it do to the name of my family? What are my actions? What are the consequences of my actions going to do to my family? Okay? That was something that was burned into my head as, as a kid, you know. That's why I, I always, just before I did the really bad thing, I threw the line. I said, well, uh, first my father will kill me. It'll, it'll break my mother's heart and my uncles and so on, so on, so on, so on. So you had a sense of responsibility to the group, to the family name. So Bia Sanchez to me meant, you know, you're representing your, your group, man. You know? and, and on a broader level, you're representing your, your people, Latino, right? and so on and so on and so on. So, on. so you're, you're, just, you're just not isolated in a bag of skin. You're a representative of something. So to be a Sanchez is to represent something that's, that's the virtues, that are the virtues, excuse me, the important virtues. <clears throat>